Hello, we're back on the Geek Speak Radio Show. Christine has a major announcement to make. I think I have to pee. Yeah, you thank think. you. <laughs> anyway, so we're talking to Jen Case to learn more than she needed to know. Program Events Coordinator at Geek Girl Con. Again, the uh, website is on ours, geekspeakradioshow.com. Um, before we go on, I got to give my story. You guys have shared okay. yours. I gotta give my, I'm obviously not a geek girl. I don't even sound like one. I can try if I want to, but yeah, good luck. <laughs> um, my niece. She was, uh, I think it was you or, or Jen, somebody was saying that story. She was afraid to, to admit that she, she read my comic books, her uncle's comic books. This, she loved Star Wars, Star Trek even, the original. Um, never really got into Next Generation. She didn't, at least. She learned how to read sitting next to me while I played Final Fantasy, the, the Final oh, Fantasy really? Seven, the game. That's how she learned how to read. That's why it holds a special awesome. place for in, in her heart. I remember I told her, because she could never admit that in school or, you know, with her friends. I told her, you know, be not afraid because us geeks, we rule the world. And now, very proud of that. It's like uh, the Grateful Deads and their fans. We are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys all heard about the the Star Wars girl, right, Katie? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for, so for those who don't know, there's a woman, Carrie Goldstein, I think it is, who writes for Chicago Now. Um, she writes a blog called Portrait of an Adoption, and she wrote this very moving blog post about her little girl, Katie, who took a Star Wars water bottle to school and the boys teased her and said Star Wars is for boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not it's not for girls. Girls girls don't like Star Wars. And so her mom found this out because Katie had wanted to stop taking her Star Wars, her favorite thing, her Star Wars water bottle to school. She wanted to take like a pink one or something. And, you know, broke down and started crying and explained all this. So her mom wrote this blog post and, like, thousands of people, geek girls and our allies, wrote letters to her say, t- talking of their experiences, like like yours with your niece or and, and how she, she came to be comfortable with being a geek. And, right. you know, I don't think it's so much about her being a geek. I think it's that... We we so associate certain things with certain genders. You know, you look at the the Star Wars water bottles are probably in the boys' aisle at the toy store. You know, and so little kids think those are for boys. And so part of what we want to do with Geek Girl Con is show that you know these things are for everybody. Right. Awesome. Well, and that trickles really quickly. That trickles down. I mean, the Geek Girl Con in theory could trickle down to uh, children and women, specifically girls, going into sciences eventually if they're encouraged from a very young age that geekiness or uh, interest in science and video games and math and engineering is a okay. Then we will obviously women are going to college in greater numbers than men, so we can we could essentially shift the tide of American industry if we get all of these girls from Geek Girl Con to go to college and study math and engineering, right? I mean, so it's a, the ripple effect could be, I mean, immense. Yes, exactly, which is why we we absolutely, we're going to have some um, PhD candidates in the sciences talking, but I definitely want to make sure, I've talked to a local meteorologist about maybe doing some sort of, like, exhibit specifically for children and um, young girls. Cool. Yeah. That's why I always say be kind to today's geek because because they are tomorrow's employer. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jen, real quick, uh, going over your website, and I came across something that really uh, jumped out at me. <laughs> why the Batman TV series matters. <laughs> why does it matter? Why does the Batman TV series matter? Well, so this book that came out from Sequart uh, Publishing, they did a, they do sort of academic um, research into the comic arts. Um, this book, uh, Gotham City for, for Gotham City, fourteen miles, from edited by Jim Beard, uh, has fourteen essays dedicated to looking at the nineteen sixties Batman television series. And so, why it matters is explored in fourteen essays, um, looking at everything from uh, the effect of the music in the show on pop culture to villains in the series. Um, I talk about, or I wrote about the women on the show, um, both the heroines and the villains. I mean, Batgirl was one of the fir- Yvonne Craig's Batgirl, who, by the way, did her own stunts, rode that motor, that bat cycle herself, um, uh, and was a dancer. So she, so yeah, so she did her own stunts. She was like one of the first female action heroes on television. Um, Eartha Kitt uh, was one of the first black females um, on television in an action heroine role or, you know, female villain role. 
Um, although, you know, you'll notice that they changed uh, her from being a, um, a love interest to being just a pure villain because of social taboos. Um, it wouldn't be until the next year when you had the first interracial kiss on television um, on Star Trek. Um, so yeah, you can see that you can see how at that time how the the comic and the TV show kind of um, reflected each other a little bit. So the, the 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 character was created specifically to be on the show, but they put her in the comic first. Awesome. We were yeah. Sp- we were speaking with Jen K. Stoller, director of programming for Geek Girl Con. You can check out all the information at geekgirlcon.com. Jen, we want to thank you for your time today. We really do appreciate it. Oh, thank you guys so much. This has been fun. You're amazing. We're going to talk. You and I are going to talk in person. We have we have some bonding, some more bonding to do. We do. Geek bonding is uh, over Buffy. <laughs> yes, fantastic. <laughs> One more reminder also, Jen, uh, anybody who wants to either be a guest or suggest a panel, they can go to Geek Girl Con and do that, right? Yes, absolutely. And buy your passes, please. It'll help us make our con awesome. Yeah, that all of that is, like I said, on geekgirlcon.com, which is on ours, geekspeakradioshow.com. All easy for you. Just go on there. And Jen's links are there on there, too. So, again, Jen, thanks a lot for coming on. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. We loved having you here. Okay, thanks. <laughs> 